Hello and welcome! I'm Heath, and let's talk about how to play the Shadow Dark RPG. Shadow Dark is part of the old-school gaming family of RPGs, built off the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Foundation. So this video assumes that you already know the basics of Dungeons & Dragons, and concentrates on what makes Shadow Dark different from D&D, so you know what to expect at the table. But if you don't know D&D, I have a video on how to play Dungeons & Dragons in 5 minutes here on this channel, so you might want to check that out first. All right, here we go. Here's what you need to know in order to sit down at a Shadow Dark table and start playing. First, Shadow Dark uses a slot system for inventory. That means there's no need to track the weight of equipment by pounds or ounces. Characters have a number of slots equal to 10 or their strength score, whichever is more. Some items, like large weapons, take up more than one slot. Other items, such as rations, allow you to have more than one of the same item in a single slot. Second, Shadow Dark is always played in initiative order. Initiative is determined by rolling a d20 and then adding your dexterity modifier. The player that rolled the highest goes first. Then, play proceeds clockwise around the table. Third, Shadow Dark doesn't use a grid for movement, so there's no moving square by square. Instead, Shadow Dark uses the abstract close, near, and far for ranges in order to adjudicate distance. Fourth, Shadow Dark dispenses with D&D's Vancian magic system in favor of a roll-to-cast system. This has the advantage that you won't necessarily lose a spell when cast, and you have the potential to cast a single spell multiple times between rests. But beware that this means that sometimes you will not be able to cast a spell even once if you fail the first casting roll after a rest. Fifth, Death Timers and the Expectation of Death. Death is real and present in Shadow Dark. You'll die if you're reckless, pure and simple. That means you might not want to get overly attached to your characters, but that also means you'll really love those that do make it through the dark and level up. Characters can't make a living just fighting everything they see and everything that moves like they can in D&D. But at least death isn't instantaneous when you hit zero hit points. When you hit zero hit points, you are unconscious and must roll for your death timer. Roll a d4 and add your constitution modifier. Your character dies in that number of rounds unless healed. There is a slim chance you'll bounce back on your own, though. Each round that you're out, roll a d20. If you roll a 20, you regain consciousness and one hit point. Dying characters can be stabilized by a DC 15 intelligence check. The character is no longer dying, but remains unconscious. By the way, non-magical healing takes place during a rest. To rest, your character has to sleep for eight hours and consume one ration, which is both food and water in this game. So rations are also an important consumable. No rations, no healing. But at the end of the rest, you get back all of your hit points. Sixth, a real-time counter for torches. The mechanic that Shadow Dark is perhaps best known for is the real-time torch timer. When a character lights a torch, start a 60-minute timer at the table. When the timer is done, the torch is out. Torches are an important resource in the game because the darkness is very threatening during a crawl, so the game master must be paying close attention to what is illuminated and what is not. You don't want to find yourself in the dark. Seventh, limited character classes. If you're rolling up characters, you'll find a limited number of classes to choose from. Fighter, Priest, Wizard, and Thief. Very old school, but the classes can be combined with the following ancestries. Dwarf, Elf, Goblin, Half-Orc, Halfling, and Human to create a lot of variety of iconic characters. Also, an important part of character creation and leveling up is rolling for new talents on a class-specific table. These allow you to customize your character at the start, as well as when you gain experience. Oh yeah, and speaking of experience, it's primarily accumulated by collecting treasure, so get into the dungeons looking for riches. A few other things you might want to know about Shadow Dark before you sit down to play include that melee combat is run basically the same as in Dungeons & Dragons. However, neither your strength nor your dexterity bonuses are added to your damage rolls. In melee combat, just add your strength modifier to your to-hit roll. Some special talents will allow you to add additional bonuses to your to-hit rolls and also to your damage rolls. If you're looking for rules for dual wielding in Shadow Dark, you won't find them. There is no dual wielding weapons in this game. In that spirit, the action economy is simple. On your turn, you can move, take a full action, and perhaps do some small parallel task. But that's basically it. There are no bonus actions, there are no partial actions, nothing like that. Take your move, which is largely done by just moving to a near distance, and then perform a full round action. That's basically it. In a similar vein, you're not going to get more than one attack around. Not because you're dual wielding, and also not because you're naturally leveling up. Martial combat characters will see their attacks improve, but they aren't going to get more than one. We talked about resting to recover hit points, but rest will also refresh special abilities and also your spells. But be aware there are no short rests. All rests are long rests where you sleep eight hours, do light activities, and if you eat the ration, you can recover your hit points.
we talked about darkness being scary in the game, and that's because none of the player characters will have dark vision. If you're looking for your elf, your dwarf, or even your goblin to have dark vision, you're not going to find it. All of the player characters are going to have to rely on torches to be able to see, and thus are going to have to pay attention to the torch timer. However, a lot of monsters do have dark vision. That's just the way the game is played. It's asymmetric. Players need to be afraid of the dark, but a lot of your foes are going to be able to operate in the dark without a problem. If you'd like to know more about using this virtual tabletop to play Shadow Dark, I have a video specifically on this table setup and how to use it. And if you'd like to play with us online, click the link below.